all right welcome back in this video series we'll be looking at how to represent floating points in memory please note that to store any floating point number four bytes is enough to do so so you can use four bytes which is 32 bits to represent floating points in memory um, and that is distributed accordingly. One bit, one bit for the sign bit, one bit for the sign, eight bit for the exponent, for the exponent part. Then we also have the many twenty three bit. For the significant part. So the total of 1 plus 89 plus 23 does 32 bits. So 32 bits, which is used to represent floating points, are distributed in that order. 1 bit for the sine bit, 8 bit for the exponent part, and 23 bit for the significant part. Now let's go. Proceed on how to do so. The procedure on how to represent floating point, the first thing, step one, convert the value, convert the floating number, convert the floating number to binary. That's step one. Step two, represent the converted value represent the binary number number to normalize form or in normalized form in normalized form which is taken as an execute form then, then the third part to add the exponent bias that is add bias to exponent so that does how to do so. So step one, convert the floating point to binary. Step two, represent that binary in normalized form, the number three, add bias to exponent. All right, let us go. For example, you are giving this value to represent. Example one, represent 10.75. So represent this value or say minus 10.75 represent as 0.5 using floating point format using floating point format so if you are using floating point format so step one we say convert to binary to convert to binary you will have so 10 divide this one by 10 divide this we have 5 remainder 0 this will give us 2 remainder 1 this will give us 1 remainder 0 and this will give us 0 remainder 1 pass for the integer part for the decimal part remember we multiply multiply by 2 so this will give us 1.5 0, multiply the decimal part again by 2, that will give us 1.00, so once we get 0, we stop. So this one up, up to down, this one is down to up. So we have 1010.11, so 1010.11, that's what you got first. So we are done with step one, convert to binary. Then the step two says represent the binary in normalized form. That is using a um, scientific format. For example, now, so since we have 10111.11, one, 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 take the decimal to the first value. So that means 1010. Dot one one take this decimal one two three so we move that by three places we have one point 
times 10 raised to, no, not 10, please, times the base. The base we are is 2. So times 2 raised to power 3. Number of movements we made. We made 3 movements from here 1, 2, 3. So we are done with step 2. So step 2 is 1.01011 times 2 raised to power 3. That's, we shifted 3 places to the left. That's why it is raised to power 3. So we are done with step 2. So in this step 2 now, in normalized form, so normalized form is this value we have, the exponent, the exponent is the power, which is 3. The significance, please note, the significance is 1.01011. So exponent is 3. Significance is 1.011 for that. So after we have done that, the next step is to add bias to exponents. Please note, in floating number, there is no concept called tools complement to store negative numbers. So what we what uh, was adopted was that to overcome that, they came up with bias concepts where they add some positive values to negative value to make it positive. I repeat, bias concept is a concept whereby they add some positive values to a negative value to make that negative value a positive value. So in general, whether a value is negative or positive, they add bias value to that exponent value to reduce implementation complexity. Please note, this is done to reduce implementation complexity. And for us to add bias, so step three is add bias. Add bias to exponent. So we know exponent, which is 3, but don't know bias. So to calculate for your bias, this is your formula to do so. Bias is, is given by 2 raised to the power m minus 1 minus 1. 2 raised to the power m minus 1 minus 1. Remember, if you recall, we, we said we allocated 8 bit for exponents. So are allocating 8 bit to, that means your n will be 8. This n here will be 8. If you recall from, from the beginning part, I said we have 32 bits. Take you back a bit. We said 1 bit for sine bit, 8 bit for exponent. So the exponent is 8. So bringing down to the bias formula, bias formula we have here says 2n minus 1 minus 1. So our n would be 8 since of this representing the 8 bit for the exponent so it will now be if n is 8 so n equal to 8 so we now have 2 raised to the power 8 minus 1 minus 1 this gives us 2 raised to the power 7 minus 1 and that is 2 raised to the power 7 1 to 8 minus 1 is 1 to 7 so this will give us 1 to 7 so having gotten 127, hence we said add it, uh, add a um, bias to exponent. So when we add bias to exponent, our exponent is, bias is 127, then our exponent is 3, giving us 130. So when you get the 130, the next thing you're going to do is represent this 130 in binary. So if you do that, it will give you 1, it will give you 128 and 2. 128 and 2 is 130. So 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So in binary, 130 binary will give you um, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0 in binary. So having gotten that, so the next we're going to do now is to add all the values together. So let's add all the values together to get our answer. Recall, since the negative value, the value we are giving is minus 10.75 to represent. We said one bit for uh, sine bit. If it's positive, it's zero. If it's negative, it is one. So for the sine bit, if you recall, this is the floating point representation. We said one, this is sine bit. Then this is eight. This is sine bit. This is exponent bias. 
and this is your your significant or called mantisa, which is 23 bits. So let's drive it down. So we have now our value we have, since negative value here becomes one, then our exponents we just converted, just converted 130, give us 10000123456678. Then the mantisa which we have, recall the mantisa we had, this is the mantisa or the significant we have, which is this. So you know that I told you the answer is significant we have here. This is our significant, which is 0 0.01011. So this one is not needed. We, di we discard the, the one. We start writing from the point after the point, which is 0 01011. So from after the point, it becomes what? 0 01011. Now we said it's 23 bit for this, but we only need it for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we're going to add 0 to complete it in 23. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. So therefore, minus 10.75 is equal to. One one zero 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 one zero zero one zero one one zero 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 zero. So if you count, it must be thirty two. So that's how the values are gotten. So let us see. Let's use the upper one since there is no space to write down here now. So the answer for minus 10, 75 is the same as what we have right here. So one for this for sine bit, which is negative value, you can see is one. Assuming it's positive, here becomes zero. Here will be zero. Then the exponent bias, which is one zero 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 one zero. Then the significant, which is this is also that significant or Mantisa, which is the remaining one. So that's how to calculate that. See you in the subsequent video. Thank you.